Charlie Matei and his son Anatole are saying their goodbyes to Charlie's mother after a visit. Charlie, a retired mafia boss, now lives a peaceful life along with his wife and two kids. Only Anatole came on this trip, and the two enjoy some classical music on their road trip back home, and have fun together, and we can see that Charlie loves his kids. The two get back to the city, and Anatole gets out of the car to go watch a man and his goat performing tricks. Meanwhile, Charlie brings the car to an underground garage for parking. He pulls into his spot and sits for a while enjoying the music, but as he steps out, a squad of eight hitmen open fire on him, pumping 22 bullets into Charlie before shooting his dog and escaping, leaving Charlie in a messy state and almost dead. Somehow, Charlie regains consciousness and Anatole is left alone on the upper level. While laying there, Charlie remembers spending time in prison where he met a mafia boss named Padovano, who taught him everything he knows about the mafia life, and his lesson of always staying on guard rings through Charlie's head. Charlie is rushed to the hospital. Meanwhile, Tony Zakia, Charlie's old friend and successor, gets the news of Charlie's attack and is worried. News of the attack on Charlie, one of the last godfathers, begins to circulate, and investigating the case is Detective Marie Goldman, who arrives on the still active crime scene. While the doctors tirelessly remove the bullets from Charlie, he further remembers hearing news of Padovano's assassination by his rival Hernandez, who even had the nerve to show up to the funeral. A young Charlie, along with Tony and another friend Aurelio, had planned to seek vengeance for Padovano. With Tony as the rider, they rode down on Hernandez and his men, and Charlie brutally shot him to death. We then see Charlie's second wife, mother of Anatole, arrive at the hospital, along with Charlie's daughter Eva to see Charlie who is recovering. Marie goes to meet with the chief regarding Charlie's case. However, he thinks that trash should take out trash, and they should not rush to investigate. Marie, however, believes in due process. The chief relents, telling her to question Charlie, but he doubts that she will get any info out of him. She and another officer go to speak with Charlie, but he just stares at her as she asks her questions. She reminds him that his attackers could return to finish off the job and asks for his help, but Charlie calls her close to tell her no. Charlie's lawyer then gets them to leave before having two of his former henchmen come in. We see Marie at home with her son, as he asks her about his father, a former cop, who was killed. The questions shake Marie, but she reassures her son that his father is in a better place and watching over them, all while tears stream down her face. Outside the hospital, Charlie's lawyer Martin and former henchman Kareem argue over what they should do. Kareem wants to launch an attack, but Martin reminds him that they don't know who the attackers are. Kareem relents, but warns Martin to never leave Charlie's side. Meanwhile, we see an assassin disguise himself as a doctor and infiltrate the hospital. He pulls his gun and opens fire into Charlie's room. Charlie had been moved to another room by his henchwoman Pat, and the assassin had actually killed an innocent patient. After this, Marie has her team set up surveillance of Charlie's room and the hospital. A day later, we see Tony arrive with his men to the hospital with flowers and make their way to his room. While his men stay outside, Tony goes in to speak with his friend, relieved that he is looking better. He leaves Charlie a picture of the patron saint of healing and a box of chocolates, before promising to find who did this to him. Marie meets with the doctor who complains about Charlie's refusal to go under anesthesia, due to his fear of being taken out. Also refusing to leave his room for an x-ray, they realize that he had a gun under his mattress. We then see Martin, with his wife who is ill, with their daughter Eva blasting music upstairs. He goes to her room, asking her to turn it down, but Eva is actually crying in her bed. Martin hugs her telling her not to cry, but Eva is broken up about her father. She thinks he lied about still being mafia and that he doesn't care about her or her mother. Charlie in the hospital stabs himself in the hand with a fork, revealing that he cannot feel anything. The doctor tells him he will never be able to use his right arm as they were forced to sever the damaged nerve. His mother tells him that God saved his life so he could change it, and makes him promise that she will pass before him. Marie and her partner get some intel regarding Charlie's hit and suspect a felon in prison named Pistachio. She meets with him, accusing him of ordering the hit. But Pistachio denies being involved and refuses to talk. Karim gets news about a man boasting about the hit, and Karim and Martin break the news to Charlie. 
The three leave the hospital in a car, but Marie and her men begin to follow them. Karim realizes they're being followed, and a high-speed chase ensues, but Karim calls in a favor, and a car blocks Marie's path. The three men arrive at an old warehouse, where Pat has their suspect drugged and bound with his feet in concrete. The man's name is Frederick, and Charlie promises not to harm him if he tells the truth. Frederick turns out to be one of Tony's men, and under the influence of the drugs, he rats out Tony and name drops seven persons who went on the hit. Charlie demands to know why, and learns that when he sold his operations to Tony, his condition was no blow. However, Tony saw blow as the future and teamed up with Pistachio. He was scared of Charlie's reaction and decided to hit him first. Charlie gets mad hearing this, but tells Kareem to do nothing. Kareem thinks that Frederick will rat them out to Tony, but Charlie cannot bring himself to start a war with his one-time best friend, and orders them to send Frederick home. Charlie is then brought back to his home where he reunites with his wife and two children. Marie turns up but does not interrupt. Karim returns home to have dinner with his family. After dinner he is heading out, when suddenly a black van pulls up, and he is abducted. The men bring Karim to an isolated location where they brutally beat him. It is Frederick who has ratted him out to the men, and they allow him to get the last kick on Karim before they shoot him dead. One man then tells Karim that Tony has a message for Charlie before pulling out a massive knife. Charlie's wife then gets a package delivered to her, only to find a dismembered part of Karim. The funeral for Karim is held soon after with Charlie in attendance. As the men pray, the women stand aside in tears, and Pat stares grimly. While Tony's men celebrate their attack, Charlie observes the pains of the people around him, including Karim's father. He hugs his family before ordering Pat to take care of them. The men are still partying. When one man Pascal begins mocking Tony's stutter, and how he always chastises them for smoking in his house, when suddenly Charlie ambushes them holding a live grenade in one hand and a gun in the other. He has each of the men disarm themselves before having the maid dump the guns in the tank. He ensures that each man knows exactly who he is before telling them they will all die. He will not kill them now, but wants them to worry day and night, and when they least expect it, he will be there. As for right now, Charlie identifies one of his shooters named Bastion, telling him he is first in line and shoots him dead. Six months later, Eva is fed up living in hiding with her stepmother, and demands to go home to be with her dying mother. Pat reminds her how dangerous the men are, until her grandmother comes and manages to calm her down completely. One of Bastion's friends comes to put flowers on his grave, talking about the good times they had when Charlie turns up. The man swears he was just following orders, but Charlie shoots him dead on the spot. A few days later, Marie goes to meet with Tony, while outside a man places a tracker under her car. She asks him about the death of his men, and Tony suspects Charlie, but lies saying that Charlie has always been jealous of him. Tony suggests that he and Marie could be friends and work together, even revealing that he knows that she has a son, but Marie refuses to work with a criminal. Tony's men then break into Martin's apartment and trash the place, before setting off a concussive explosion. Martin returns home soon later and sees the mess. He rushes from the apartment, but one of Tony's men begins following him and contacts the gang. Tony is at his seaside hideout when Martin comes to see him. Charlie warns him that he should not have come, but Martin thinks he was not followed. Martin tells him about Tony attacking their different businesses and homes, but just then, Charlie realizes that Tony's men have found them. Charlie gives Martin a gun and tells him to escape to the speedboat. Meanwhile, a gunfight erupts between Charlie and the men. Martin makes it to the boat, but the men release dogs that quickly catch up to him, and they corner him. Meanwhile, the men are tearing Carly's house to shreds, but Charlie manages to jump on a bike and speed away from the property. The men give chase and open fire at him, but Charlie manages to stay ahead. The chase leads into the city, and Charlie tactically crashes into a police car, causing the cops to surround him, saving him from his attackers. Martin is brought before Tony, who warns him to give up Charlie, or he might forget that they are old friends. Charlie is brought before Marie, who accuses him of the murders of Tony's men, and that he plans to kill more, but Charlie reminds her that he can't even use his arm. She then reveals that one of the eight attackers was actually not trying to kill him that day, and missed him on purpose, but Charlie thinks nothing of it. Despite her suspicions, Marie is forced to let Charlie go. A few days later, 
one of the eight is walking his elderly mother in the park when he is shot to death. Another of the eight, named Frank, is heading out with his dogs when Charlie corners him and shoots him in the foot. Charlie demands info and shoots him in the other foot when he refuses. The man begs for an ambulance, but Charlie demands to know who was the eighth attacker in the garage. Tony, who is attending a wedding, gets news of Frank's disappearance and sends his men to find him. Meanwhile, Frank denies knowing who the eighth man was as he never saw his face, but Charlie does not believe him. Frank begs him not to shoot and promises to give him information on Tony. Frank then logs into the Mafia's databases and shows Charlie all the Tony's black market dealings and contacts. Meanwhile, Tony's man arrives at the location and seeing Frank's empty van he pulls his gun. The dogs begin to bark alerting Charlie. The two exchange gunfire but Charlie is able to hit the man. Frank is missing, so Charlie takes the flash drive before tracking him down. Outside the injured man calls Tony, who gathers his men to set out. Frank begs Charlie not to shoot him telling him about his daughter and crying that he wants to see her again. He shows Charlie a doll that supposedly belongs to his daughter, but Charlie finds illicit substances inside. Frank asks for forgiveness, and he gets it from Charlie, along with two shots killing him. Tony arrives at the location and throws a fit for losing Charlie once again. He then orders his men to track Charlie down and end his entire family. The groom from the wedding, who is also one of Tony's men, is returning home when he comes upon a car blocking the road. He impatiently gets out and goes over to argue, but two swift shots drop him. The gun from the scene is processed, and Marie learns that Charlie's fingerprint was found on the gun. Charlie goes to meet with Martin in a pub filled with cops. He knows that Tony is trying to frame him for hits to get the cops after him. He hands Martin the flash drive telling him to make a copy and take one to Aurelio. Marie is arguing with her boss, doubting that the recent hit was done by Charlie, but the captain just wants Charlie behind bars and orders Marie to prepare a warrant. She goes to sit and drink alone in her car when she remembers that Charlie has a son and he must attend school, and if they can find Anatole, they can find Charlie. The next day, Pat picks up Anatole from school unaware that Marie and her partner are following them. Pat then picks up Ava also when a red car cuts them off. Suddenly a van pulls up and men open fire hitting killing Pat on the spot. Marie and her partner try to engage the men, but their rifles are too powerful and the men grab Anatole and Eva. A few hours later, the police were able to rescue Eva, but they still have Anatole. She then tells them that the men will kill Anatole if Charlie does not surrender. Marie gets back to her car when Charlie turns up. He reminds her that Tony was the one who took her husband's life and he will kill Anatole too if she does not help him. He wants her to announce that Charlie is captured so Tony can lower his guard and he can get to Anatole. Marie is hesitant, but Charlie promises to surrender to the police after. Seeing how passionate Charlie is, Marie agrees. News of his capture soon reaches Tony who orders his men to take care of Anatole. One man thinks they are going too far, but Tony is adamant and also orders Aurelio's execution. Charlie sees Pascal leaving Tony's place and begins to follow him. Charlie arrives at a remote building surrounded by fences and breaks in. He struggles against the barbed wires trying to get to his son. Meanwhile, Pascal orders his underling to end Anaol, but the young man thinks that is too cruel. Pascal threatens to stab him if he does not comply, but as he turns his back, the man hits him overhead with a shovel and takes off. The man tries to free Anatole, but Pascal recovers and stabs him killing him. Tony then grabs Anatole and brings him to his car. Charlie, who spots him, jumps on his car causing him to crash. Pascal jumps out and pulls his knife. He begins slicing up Charlie's right arm, until Charlie grabs him and beats him down before breaking his neck. Charlie rescues Anatole from the car and the two hug in tears. It turns out the attack on Aurelio was a failure and Tony's men were killed. Aurelio is in critical condition and the detective was able to retrieve a flash drive from his jacket. Tony is alone in his home when he gets a bad feeling and comes searching for his family. Charlie is there to ambush him and holds him at gunpoint. The two argue about the paths they both took in life, and Tony is angry at Charlie for leaving everything for a quiet life like he was better than them. Tony tells Charlie to get on with it, but Charlie hesitates, killing his friend. Tony then turns the tables and holds a gun to Charlie. He beats Charlie up, ordering him to beg for his life, and when Charlie refuses, Tony pours hot water all over his head. 
before he can shoot Charlie. The cops rush into the building and hold both men at gunpoint and arrest them. Charlie is released from the police station and Martin comes to pick him up. Charlie then tells Martin to drive to a location. Martin drives and they end up at the parking garage where Charlie was attacked. Charlie then reveals that he knows that Martin was the eighth shooter. Martin then nervously reveals that Tony had forced him to go along with the men and he was unaware that Charlie was the target. He reminds Charlie that he did not shoot him and begs for his life. Charlie then lets off shots next to him, telling him they are now even. The movie ends with Charlie on a beach with his wife and kids. Remember to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more movies like this. Thanks for watching.